Hey guys, I'm gonna do a set of paintings today because we are going to be comparing some art supplies. I have thus far been using this set of watercolor paints by Koi from Sakura. These are generally considered student grade watercolor paints. So they're not bad. They are fine quality as it says. And you have seen a lot of what I've done with them, but I just did a little investment as I seem to be getting kind of serious about this to a set of Windsor and Newton half pans. Just got these in the mail and got a nice little selection of colors. Took forever to unwrap each of the little things, but uh, I'm not going to judge about that. Bye. So I came up with a couple small little sketches. I'm gonna use my little uh, postcard size paper for uh, similar in design, kind of cartoony little animals. And I'm gonna paint one with my set, my existing set of the Koi watercolors, and then another one with the set of the Windsor Newton. And then we will compare and contrast and see, is it really worth the difference in cost? Um, so I've. Let me get this other camera going here so that we can see what I'm actually doing. This is my painting surface. I'm actually using an old canvas board with a ancient crappy painting on it. And I use this to tape down my watercolor sheets. And this is what we will be painting on. I really attempted to put these on here so that, let's actually move this out a little bit, so that I won't be dragging my hand across this one while I'm working on this one. I'm trying to think a little bit, using my brain. All right, let's just get started and see how it goes. This should be interesting. I'm gonna start with my old familiar set of paints so that I feel comfortable knowing what I'm getting into and what I'm doing, and then I can work on the next one and go with a similar approach. That's my plan. So I'm starting to lay in some background color, kind of like a random effect of field of color on there, get my little eyes on my guy, and just keep building it up. I've been trying to keep it in mind to keep my backgrounds less dominant than my foregrounds. Um, that's a learning process of figuring out what works best to do that with this medium. One thing about working with the Koi paints, uh, I'm a little bit used to them at this point, but they don't go down super smooth. You gotta really uh, work at getting a nice saturated tone with them. Building up layers can be a little bit hard to, to control, but you just keep working at it. That's what I've learned to do. Just keep fussing with it and pushing it around to get it to go where I want it to go. So I'm giving this guy some funny little feet and a funny little nose and a little quote, proper cartoon style. I will go back in and add some detail and a little bit of a color contrast within his body. Punch him up. All right, pretty happy with him. Less details. And I am nervous, like straight nervous, to break out this new set of paints. Does that ever happen to you? When you're about to do something new with something you haven't used before. In theory, it should be better, make things easier, but 
I'm just kind of nervous about it. My anxiety is high. All right, well, here we go. No time like the present. Just like the other one, I'm gonna work with the background and just create washes in a family of colors. First thing I notice is the difference of mixing the colors on the metal palette as opposed to the plastic one I'm using for my other paints. Um, it pools more, it uh, has more surface tension in the metal, which makes it kind of harder to mix the paints and see exactly what I'm working with. So that's interesting, but right off the bat, I'm seeing that these colors are super saturated, really intense hues. So I have to keep in mind that I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna do a yellow wash over everything to kind of tone back those shades of purple and blue. And while I'm at it, let's just do our little character here, give it a base coat. Now that that's dried, start adding in some of the color. And oh, look how smooth that's going on. I like it, it's very nice. See what happens when we add in some low lights and contrast. Look at how nice that looks and it's almost effortless. All right, now we'll see what it's like when I start trying to add in some more color contrasts and uh, some more details. Let's see how it builds. So here's something I'm noticing. I like the depth that I'm starting to get, but it's like this paint wants to blend beautifully, which I'm not used to. So I'm gonna have to get used to approaching that to get what I mean to get. This will be easier in the long run, but I just have to get accustomed to the differences of it. It's gorgeous. So getting some funky layers and overlays is a little bit different, but this is going to be great to work with, I think. I'm very excited. All right, getting the last details on here. reveal everything's dried I'm happy with both of them being that they're just some funky little characters that I came up with specifically to do this project with and they're just fun and I like the colors I am happy with the depth of it I don't think they got too muddy I need to figure out with the new paint palette getting the proper balance between a saturated full-on colors and um, blending them out so they're not so intense but not also getting to the stage of being muddy so that's going to take a little doing but my biggest um, impression is just how lovely they blend and lay down and it dries really nice you could see in the background of that piece we will get a closer shot here in a second but uh, where I let the colors pool wet on wet, like very wet, you definitely get a more um, contrasting edge around the paint, like to the right of this piece, the purple underneath the speech bubble. So that's okay, I like that. I just need to get accustomed to it again. This one was a lot of fun. You can see that the colors are not as punchy and it's a little, it looks worked. It looks more worked than the other piece does. So there we have it. 
two pieces done, one with some student grade paints, one piece with professional grade paints. I think they are both absolutely usable and workable, and I am excited to accomplish more and get used to working with the student, the, I'm sorry, the professional grade paints, because I think it should make it easier for me to create what I want to create without getting muddy, without getting overworked. And it's only going to be good, right? So I will have links below to all the products that I used today, the paper, the paints, everything was identical from piece to piece outside of the paints, the brushes, the tap water, it was all the same. So yeah, if you're interested in trying any of these, I think that both are great options. I think you have to work a little harder at what you want to achieve with the cheaper paints, but you can absolutely do that. And I can't wait to play with more with these. Well, thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful and I will see you guys next time. Stay sane, make things.